Abigail, you can shed some light on what exactly caused the U-turn today. Yeah, this has been a really a pretty amazing day, but in some ways not so surprising, Romaine, because the CPI print, when you think about it, while the core was above, uh, you could make the case that peak inflation is in place. We're almost 1% above the number that we had this summer. So the reaction that we had to the downside initially, it reversed as the dollar uh, came in, or it could just be oversold conditions to talk more about what's behind this big move that we have to the upside and whether it has legs. Let's bring in Christian Bromhurst, CEO of Tribeca Trade Group. And Christian, what a day. As a trader, you must be loving this. What do you think is behind it? Hey, Abigail. Well, I, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, the S&P was down six days in a row. And, um, you know, a lot of sectors like the semis, uh, for example, uh, were pretty extended to the downside. So I, I think it's a little bit of a combination of, of seller exhaustion. And, um, you know, perhaps some of the bad news could be priced in a little bit. When you look at a name like Applied Materials that reported after the close, uh, down 1%, they reduced guidance, and, and today they're, they're up close to 6%. So um, that tells me that in some, some areas of the market, maybe not all areas of the, of the market, and we'll hear more about that when we get to earnings season, but some areas could be that the bad news is somewhat priced in. Well, you know, it's interesting, Christian, because right now we're taking a look at the VIX curve, and VIX spot itself is at 32, but for the end of the year, uh, for December, it's at 30. So in some ways, this VIX curve that's been inverted for some time has suggested that maybe some of this volatility that we've seen to the downside could moderate. Now, interestingly, January has gone back higher, suggesting that the beginning of next year could be difficult. But do you think that this rally, that this is the beginning of something that we saw uh, like in June to August, where the S&P 500 gained nearly 20%? I mean, it's definitely possible, and I think, you know, one day is not a trend, and you bring up the VIX, which which is a great point. Uh, you know, the VIX is still at a very heightened level, um, you know, regardless of, like, you know, futures and so forth. It's still over 30, and I think that's that's a pretty high level. So we're going to want to see, the, you know, that kind of start to come down as, a, as confirmation. Um, breath, which is also pretty strong today, we're going to want to see more than just one day of strong breath. So there's a couple things like that, you know, and, of course, we can look at some of the technicals too and say okay we're starting to maybe get over even like the five day moving average in the s p that's the first thing that needs to happen and then we can kind of tackle something like the 20 day moving average uh, which we're starting to see in some other areas well i know that you've seen some interesting action around uh the mid caps and over the last two months while we have had the large caps fall double digits uh, i think the mid caps are doing better by maybe five percent or so what are you seeing options wise there that's uh, interesting and suggest that maybe you want to be overweight that area yeah, I mean, the, the mid-caps always get neglected, right? You always hear about the large caps, obviously, with the S&P and the small caps IWM. But um, really what I'm seeing uh, the biggest strength out of it is out of the mid-caps. And what's what's interesting there is that financials are an overweight. That's an area that we are seeing some strength in, both um, the bigger banks as well as the regional banks. Um, so it's just, you know, basically the relative outperformance and that actually getting um, over the 20-day moving average today. So that's very interesting to me in terms of options. We're still not seeing a big commitment. Everything that we're seeing on the call side is very short-term in nature. Even something like SOXL traded, uh, which is, you know, leveraged uh, semiconductors, just, tell, just tells you right now people are looking for that really short-term momentum reversal and going out there super aggressive in the short term, you know, trying to get that, that, that big move just for a couple days. So not a lot of conviction that this is going to last, at least right now. Very quickly, Christian, in about 20 seconds or so, what would you have to see relative to markets or options to think that maybe we're going to see some kind of rally right into the end of the year? Just more of the same. You know, we're, once the, the price action has been below all the short-term moving averages, that coming back and just a little bit more appetite, even using option flow and seeing more positioning outside of just the weekly options, maybe going out a couple months and really traders kind of taking, uh, taking a shot at putting some bigger risk down. Um, and that would show me a little bit more conviction in the market. Yeah, and maybe it would be accompanied by the dollar and rates coming in. That could really create some sort Absolutely. of uh, interesting action into the end of the year. Christian Fromhertz of Tribeca Trade Group, thanks for joining us for Options Insight today. And from New York, this is Bloomberg.